Possibilities Redefined. I am here with a very special guest, Laquan S. Johnson. He is a very good friend of mine, and he is a very, very talented and straightforward writer. Also, he is the host of an incredibly successful podcast. Laquan, what's the name of the podcast? The podcast is called Motivational Motives, and you on YouTube. If you go on YouTube, just search Quan John, Q-U-O-N-J-O-H-N. If you search Quan John, it'll take you straight to Motivational Motives, the podcast. And the book also is Motivational Motives. That's right. Absolutely. Yes. Motivational Motives. Amazing book. Absolutely amazing. I really did enjoy it. I've got my signed copy right here. Thank you. Now, okay, let, let's, let's, first of all, let's cover you, sure. what you do, and then we'll get into this amazing book. Now, you are a counselor. Yes, yes. Okay. When did you decide to get into counseling? I mean, that's actually a, a funny story. I mean, I actually didn't decide it. It decided for me. You know, um, I'm actually a person with a visual impairment by the name of Stargard's disease. Uh, Stargard's is S-T-A-R-G-A-R-D-T-S is a is a genetic eye disorder that only affects um, a minute, the minute people in the world. Yeah. Okay, so basically my parents carry the gene. Okay, they came together. I'm an only child. I was actually blessed and graced with the impairment of uh, having legal blindness. And I say blessed because have I, had I not been a person with a disability, quote unquote, or an impairment, I wouldn't be a counselor today. So I think... Um, when I went to school, you know, I was going for like, I, I was one of them guys where I, I changed majors five times. First, I was into hospitality. Then I was into business management. Then I was into criminal justice. And then I stumbled across a psychology class. And I said, hmm, I'm on to something right here, right? So after taking that psychology class, I said, all right, at first I wanted to be a psychologist. But when I learned how much time you had to spend in school, school I said, ah, all right? Oh, so, yes, okay. <laughs> right? So after I finished my undergrad at Lehman College, I actually was sponsored by the Commission for the Blind and Visually Handicapped to go to school. So after I um, finished my schooling, it actually took me six years to finish my, um, I got my associates in two years, and mm -hmm. then I transferred to a CUNY school. But when I transferred to the CUNY school, they didn't take any of my credits, okay? They took my associate's degree, but they didn't take my credits, all right? And I was pissed and I was ready to give up, but I didn't, okay? So um, I went to Lehman College, zero credits, and basically I had to do the whole four years, okay? So it took me six years to actually graduate, obtain the bachelor's degree, as opposed to four, you know what I mean? It took me six years. But what I would find out is that I, I needed that extra two years, okay? So when I got in my junior year at Lehman College, I, um, I was a peer mentor in the counseling center, okay? And that was my last two years of school. Had I not had that extra two years of, of schooling, I would not sit before you today. So when I knocked on, on the door of the counseling center and became a... Um, one of their best peer mentors, if I do say so myself, right. um, I said, you know what? This is what I want to do for a living. I mean, you know, I actually want to, um, I want to sit on the other side of the table because I'm a naturally empathetic person. I, and I think that's one of the attributes that all counselors must have. So I would say when I um, became a peer mentor within the counselor center at Lehman College, that's when I knew counseling was for me. Excellent. And I love the story. And you know what? Laquan, you're not alone. A lot of people do this transfer thing. A lot of people will change from one major to the next. It, those few years, those extra few years sometimes end up really putting you on the right path. So I do appreciate you sharing that. And I appreciate you being so positive and enthusiastic yeah. about that. Yeah. And also, thank you for sharing with us about your visual impairment, because you are no very successful and you are a, an excellent example that, you know what? Hey, when you put your mind to it, you can do it, which is exactly what this show is all about and which is exactly Absolutely. what your writing is all about. I'm going to thank I'm you. Gonna, for those of you who, who just, wa just turned in, tuned in, motivational motives. I'm, I, I'm not going to give too much of it away, but okay. when did right. you decide okay. to embark? Because writing, now, now listen, writing a book is not easy. Not easy. So when did you decide to embark on all of this? I mean, during this um, pandemic, man. And I say this pandemic has uh, served as a blessing and a curse for me. You understand? You know, um, I think it was around March 19th. That's when, when CUNY closed down and we got, we started working remote from home. And um, this is, a, this is a time where I really had to get my, 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 my um, stuff together, mm -hmm. <laughs> for lack of a better word, you know, because I have two young children at home. I have yes. an eight-year-old, three-year-old. 
right? Mm -hmm. So um, at this time, I wouldn't say I was living a, a very productive life. You know what I mean? Just to self-disclose what I was going through um, internally and emotionally and personally, I wasn't. So I said to myself, hey, you're going to be at home with your babies every day, 24-7. They can't feel the brunt of your emotional <laughs> disturbance that you're right. experiencing. So I took it upon myself to get my stuff together. I actually stopped smoking through it. Wow. During the pandemic. I actually stopped drinking. And I actually um, got my physique in, in, in tip top shape, right? So I did that for like the first um, two and a half months. So when June rolled around, I read a book by um, the rapper 50 Cent, Curtis Jackson. I read a, a book by the name of a Hustle Harder, Hustle Smarter. And after I read that book, I said, I can do this. Because basically, I took, a, um, I took a piece of what 50 did. I said, you know what? What he did, he gave you blurbs of his life, right? He gave you like snapshots of his life. And after he gave you a snapshot, he gave you a, a, a concise uh, analysis of what he, what he went through um how he dealt with it and 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 you know what his present day objective is with this dilemma you know what i mean so that's what i did with motivation motors i i started writing and um i never looked back after that plug the book one more time the inspiration for your book say it again the inspiration for my book was when when i wrote when i read the book hustle harder hustle smarter hustle that's harder hustle smarter i'll it's check a, it out i love the title it's an excellent book because he um he shows basically how he went from poverty and how he went from the urban area to a successful businessman. And he shows the tribulations that he went through en route to this prosperity, man. You know, it, it was a rocky road, but like I am a firm believer through it that bad things happen for good reasons all right. day, no, no. every day. Let me jump in right now, but you're saying bad oh. things happen for good reasons because this, this is what I liked about this book. Now I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit because when I first got the book in the mail and you 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 sent me your the copy that I've got, I, I was like, okay, great. Now it's gonna be step one is this, step two is that. Step, that that is, I was very surprised and very happy. This book is really based on case studies. That's right. And then, and then, you, so you actually are learning mm -hmm. from these individuals that you presented in this book. Right. So it is not a, I, I do want to say to the audience, this is not a step one, step two, how to book. This is a, a, a writer right. sharing uh, experiences he has had right. and how he can share his profession right. and learn a, a skill of counseling now right. into writing to motivate other people. And that is wonderful. That's so legit. what is the overall message you wanted to, because I'm the reader, so that's what I got from the book. Now, what, right. did, you, <laughs> what did you want us to learn from the book? Thank you. I mean, I, I kind of got ahead of myself, but, you're, but what I said earlier, bad things happen for good reasons. Yes. That's what I want the readers to understand. And I'll use myself, for instance, as I said earlier, had I not be blessed with this impairment of legal blindness, I would not sit before you today. This legal blindness actually makes me who I am. You know what I mean? And I actually counsel students with disabilities for LaGuardia Community College. And that's what I tell them. Embrace your impairment. Okay? If you embrace it, it will become a strength. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's actually, it's, you know what it's doing? It's actually building the armor necessary for the bigger tribulations and the bigger trials that you're going to have in life. Okay, and you're gonna need this armor, you know, you're gonna need that umbrella to take to protect you from the poor, the pouring rain, you know, so actually, your weakness is actually your strengths. So, you know what I mean? So this book teaches you how the characters utilize their dilemma, and their, and their uh, uh, inevitable negative set of circumstances to basically, you know, help them become stronger and um, more positive role models to themselves. Because I, I teach people, you're not proving yourself to no one else first you have to prove yourself to thyself mm -hmm. once you prove yourself to thyself it's easier to come across to people as being an authentic person but if you're not you if you haven't proved that to yourself yet you're, you're going to come off as a fraud and as a fake to others okay yeah. so yeah. once you can look yourself in the mirror and say hey yeah i'm laquan johnson yeah i do have a visual impairment you know what i mean but you know what i also have x y and z and a b c and d positive attributes on my resume, right? 
So, you know, bad things happen for good reasons. You, we should actually embrace these bad moments, okay? Because, you know, I, I, I say um, that you're going to get something out of it. You right. know what I mean? It, it's, at your, it's, it's, it's at your perspective. It's about, pers life, about perspective. Great message. Great message. And again, for those people who are just turning in, it's called Motivational Motives. Motivational Motives. Motivational Motives. Yes, Johnson. Great book. Great read. Now, what, yeah. now listen, I'm not going to give too much of the book away, but one of my, one of my uh, favorite uh, 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 case studies, chapters, you know how you have the book laid out here, uh -huh. Emotional Ricochet Effect. That one, <laughs> I yeah. really got into it. Right. I almost read like a story great message yeah now what what is that what is the emotional ricochet well, well let's speak about the story of emotional ricochet effect it's about two friends two friends that come from different sides of the totem pole for lack of a better word okay one friend his mom is um she 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 encourages education and things of that nature other friend his mom is too too not um she she's not too she's not a disciplinarian and she really lets him do what he wants and of course they they raise up they, they're raised in two different atmospheres okay all right so they become really friends because of um a uh, common interest and um but they have um they get they they have discrepancies and quarrels because this friend over here is trying to embrace positivity onto this other guy but the other guy he's not really hearing it he's not at the point in time in his life where he he wants to be um taught because he hasn't been raised in, in this type of household okay so um you know unbeknownst to the positive guy the um the guy the negative guy let's call him he um he sets this guy up to be to be robbed yeah. but he also he only wants him to be robbed just to um so he can see a sign of weakness he doesn't want him to be hurt that's not his intention his intention is basically so he can see fear in the guy's eye all right he, 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 they plan this scheme to go get some drugs or something is, is that right yeah, okay right right he, he he um he bumps into another guy that he that he knew from the neighborhood and um he said hey i know this guy that has a lot of drugs in, in his home which wasn't true okay <laughs> That was not true. So he lied to his co-conspirator also. He lied to him to get to, so he can have the courage to go into this guy's home, all right? So they mustered up the courage to knock on a guy's door and unbeknownst to the robbers, the guy wasn't afraid, okay? He came to the door, he wasn't afraid. He thought it was some sick joke, all right? So about after two or five minutes of going back and forth, you know what I mean? He finally realizes, oh, they're not playing because they're waving guns in his face. And he grabs the guy. He grabs one of the guns, right? He grabs the gunman and he almost has him on the ground. And if he would have taken this gun away from this guy, he would have shot everyone. But before he did that, one of the other gunmen shot him in his head, mm -hmm. okay? You know, and as I, I I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in the higher power, there is a God and this guy did not die, okay? The doctors told him if it had been like a, a, a half an inch or a centimeter to the right, it would it would have hit his brain, which right. would have been his demise. Right. Okay, so um, it, it would have got. He never knew. He but never also, knew. it was his navel. Na he came. He was lucky in both areas. You speak of his brain, but also his navel, nasal cavity, or something like that. But it went through his nasal cavity. Up, yeah, up to his brain. Ooh, yes, okay. it was but a good shot. <laughs> a very good. You know doctor. something? This is the funny thing about that story, Truett. That the, the positive guy, he knew his friend orchestrated it. He knew. Mm -hmm. And to this day, they are actually still okay friends. Now, what the negative guy did, because you know, he had he he put himself through a lot of trauma. <laughs> okay, so he ran and fled to another state because that's what cowards do. They 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 run when they when they can't get their way, they they run away. So he went to another state and he actually orchestrated the same type of crime to a young lady yeah. that was a, a known drug dealer. Okay, same type of crime, but this one had a, a very um had a had a I, I can't it actually almost brings a tear to my eye to to even say it. This young lady actually died mm -hmm. during the robbery and she left two children behind her. Okay, while this guy is still walking the streets, but. He's actually living in his own mental prison, okay? Mm -hmm. So the, the notion and of the emotional ricochet effect is whatever, whatever energy you put out there to the world, it will ricochet and back and come hit you, all right? So if I, if I put, put out positive energy, it will ricochet back to me. 
and I will have a positive outcome. If I put out a uh, uh, negative energy and an energy of, of, of fear, it will go out there and it will ricochet and come right back to me. So basically our emotional um, instability or stability, I mean, it's, it's like the mirror. It's like a mirror. You no, know, when, when we look into this world, it's like looking into the mirror. If I walk out this door with the positivity and the optimism of, of a king, okay, I will be blessed like a king. I will be treated like a king. But if I go out here like a, a, a common criminal and a coward, I'm gonna receive the, <laughs> the benefits, quote unquote, for as, as a coward would. Well, listen, everybody watching, for more great stories and, and uh, to learn from these case studies, please right. go buy the book, Motivational right. Motives. The book right. is full of great stories. You can, case studies and story you can learn from. I really enjoyed it. You know, Laquam, it has been a pleasure. As we leave 2020, go into 2021, right. I want to ask one final question. What, right. uh, and of course, it's been very motivational just speaking to you as always. Right. I, I think this is the perfect holiday show, depending Thank on you. who you're watching it. I don't right. care if it's June of whatever, it's still a great show and it's still a That's holiday right. show for me. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. But at the end of the day, what do you want this book to say about you? I mean, that's a very good question because I, I developed an acronym. Well, I have a few acronyms, but the one for the book is what's your MRI, okay? And we all know what an MRI is, right? I mean, MRI, that's a closer look to inside the body, right? That's uh -huh. an MRI. But the MRI for motivational motives is what's your motivational reasoning for your initiative, okay? And during this pandemic, that's what I had to sit back and ask myself, all right? Laquan Johnson, what's really going on? What do you really want to do with your life? Who are you really? And what do you want to um, exhibit and exemplify to the public? Okay, so the motivational reason for initiative is something that everyone, especially 18 to 30 year olds, because that's who the book targets, yeah. 18 to 30 year olds, you right. really have to be specific about what your initiative is. Why am I going to college? Why am I taking this major? Should I be taking this major? Why am I going to this job? Why is this person my friend? You know what I mean? Am I getting married to the right person? Do I want to have children? We have to be very intentional in our questions for ourselves because if you're not intentional, you know what I mean? That means anything can happen to you. So it's about what's your motivational reasoning for your initiative. So I had to step back and ask myself, Laquan, Laquan Johnson, what is your MRI? And when I got the answer, that's when Motivation Motives came out. Well, listen, once again, congratulations. Laquan, it, it really is a good book. And I'm not just saying this because you're my friend, right. and, um, but I really did enjoy it. I'll definitely refer to it. I'll definitely use it as I move forward. And uh, what can I say? All the best in 2021. <laughs> and I just want you to know real quick, Troy, that it's coming out in audio very soon. I mean, like probably this week. It's going to be on Amazon. It's going to be on iTunes and um audible okay but they can get it in heart they can get it on amazon now though in, in paper right, but they can, they can get that in paperback and kindle but right. it, it's an audio version is coming out oh uh, yes you're saying like now like within a few days right within a few days an audio version that was narrated by by a guy by the name of spencer labelle great uh -huh. guy created my book it's gonna be on itunes it's gonna be on audibles and you can or you can get it through amazon, amazon. Yeah. perfect Excellent. Well, everybody go check it out. It's been a pleasure. Thank you Thanks. so much. Salute you, Dr. Wagner. Thank you. Thank you. All right.